Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game Stitch's 2019 Swellness Awards. Here are your hosts, Ryan Walton and Dan Reamer. Welcome to episode 311 of the official Game Stitch podcast. This is our 2018 Swellness Awards. I am Ryan Walton. As, as always, I'm joined by Dan Reamer. I would just like to point out that uh, we do not want to confuse the episode with the, the shitty prog rock band. Mm-hmm. Or shitty alternative band, whatever uh, indie, whatever you want to call them. Alt. 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 Alt, alt rock. Does anyone just go by like alt or just alt? Probably not. Carol Alt was a model and an actress. 311 is what he was referring to in case you didn't catch that. And this is our Swellness Award, also known as Game of the Year. Some of the big outlets like to call it. Yeah, not us, though. We, we, we come up with our own want. name. Yeah. If you com- wonder why it's called that, go back. Completely go back a ways. <laughs> yeah. A ways. Go back a long ways and figure it out. Um, but it is our Swellness Awards. We're glad you could be here. This is going to be a different style episode. Unfortunately, producer Gerald not able to attend. Boo. Not able to attend. I had a previous engagement. We did have to change the date of recording. Um, so he was not able to be here. However, we do have, he's locked in his picks. Yes. He's locked in his choices and we do have that. And we're going to, we're going to do our best to add some, uh, some Gerald into this. And it's important to note that, uh, why we'll be discussing our picks, we obviously can't get inside Gerald's head. So if we, um, that's the word I'm looking for, if we judge him, mm-hmm. we we don't mean to, but we kind of can't help it. Mm-hmm. And it happens. It just happens. I think it's probably a good way to put it. Yeah, it happens. It's also worth noting that because it's the game of the year and because conversations are going to happen, there's a chance things could be spoiled. Yes. If you don't want to hear it, then maybe don't even listen to this. If you don't care, I mean, it's the game of the year talk. Things could come out. I don't know what we'll talk about. I don't know what we won't talk about. Uh, but, you know, when we're talking about, you know, our favorite games, stories will probably come up. Right. And it's important. We also, you might, we might get into some heated discussions. I don't know. Debates, some people call them. Debates. Debates. D. It's like- Bates. It's like D-bag, but it's a debater. It's a debater. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with a person who is really good at putting lures on fishing lines. A master debater. That's right. That's somebody good at taking them off. The debating it. <laughs> I think that's what that means. That's what He's a debater is. A master debater. Uh, so this is our our <coughs> game of the year discussion. Now we didn't we didn't talk about this. We don't. Uh, I don't know what your picks are, and you don't know what mine are, and nope. neither. Of, well, you know what Gerald's are. I don't. I do. I do have a sneak peek into Gerald's brain, uh, and I can say that it's a. Uh, it's going to switch it up a little bit on us, but it's going to be. I think it's going to feel sort of similar, also, kind of like home. I can get that. Maybe not your home, like maybe your friend's home that you spend a lot of time at. I'll, uh, since I have very few friends, and the ones I do have don't really live anywhere near me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I don't really spend time at friends' homes, but I can. But I'm I can remember, so we'll go with that. I can I can pull that memory from my past. Now, before we go into the game of the year in the first category of the Swellness Awards 2018, yes. mm-hmm. powered by Game Stitch, okay. should we talk about what we're playing, or should we just get right into it? I think we. Skip out on what we're playing this week, maybe? Because I had a lot. I mean, I, I've played so much this week, I can't even. I can't even. I, I cram this week because there were some things that I just right. wanted to get in and do. And right. it's been a busy week. I think we I think we skip it for this week. I think we skip it for this week. I really do. Then we'll just jump into it. What's the first category, creepy announcer guy? Best Indie. 
Best Indie. Now, it's worth noting, these categories are probably different than last year and will probably be different than next year for two reasons. Things change, and because we don't remember what they were last year. Right, and we don't... If you know anything about us, you know that we don't research that shit. Right. So we just we just come up with new ones every year, and that's how we do it. <laughs> um, and we, if you're new to the to the uh, the show, welcome. Um, we don't pick one. We all have our own because uh, this show is is about us and uh, our voice, and we don't feel like we need to argue about whether or not Dan likes the art style of Donut County versus something else or whatever. Right. So we don't right. do that. We don't do that here. And the thing There's is, plenty is of we, places you can we, do that. We are very inclusive here, so we want to include each other's you know, personalities, tastes, opinions, um, because we're, we've, we've all been brought up differently. That's just the way the world works. Uh, we've had different experiences. We've lived different lives, and that's reflected in our tastes. And we like to think that that's reflected in this podcast. So let's without let's not derail this anymore. Let's jump straight into the first category, best indie, and let's. Why don't you fire us off here? You want me to fire us off? Fire, fire it will. My best indie for the year of twenty eighteen would be Hellblade: Sinuous Sacrifice by Ninja Theory. Oh, that's a great one. Um, if you're familiar with the game, you know that it. it it actually it's a it's a game that that's trying to say something but beyond that it is an amazing experience just to just uh just play through just be a part of there's the gist of it is that you are searching for your boyfriend and essentially you are mentally ill you hear voices i guess you would say bipolar um and uh it's about your experience with that Traveling through a fantasy world of uh, the I, the Vikings, if I remember correctly, and uh, it's it's visually stunning. Uh, most importantly, the sound design of the game is absolutely phenomenal, especially if you play it in headphones, which is the only way you should play that game. Uh, you you hear the different voices. It's like you are. The character, even though it is a third per, even though it isn't third person, you're not playing in first person. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it's it's just an amazing, incredible experience. That is an, an indep- and I'll get into it later. But it's an incredible independent experience that you wouldn't think would be an independent experience, right. but it is. It is an independent game. It's one I wanted to play and never got around to, but I I think that totally fits here. Uh, you know they. It'll be interesting to see where they go in the future now that they're part of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what we get as a follow-up or if there is any follow-up at all to this, but definitely a game I'd like to look into and I think a good fit for that category. Well, thank you. Would so you, you like want to go or do you want to speak I, Gerald's? It doesn't matter. I'm My thought was it. actually if we're going to do this, we should kick off with Gerald's first, discuss Gerald's, and then move on to ours. What so do you think the problem that? is some of Gerald's picks are my picks. Oh. So I hate to go too in depth on some of his because then I won't have talking points later on, and he should have been here, you know. So we're gonna go with Gerald last then, or we can go first. It's just sometimes I may not speak to we'll, gives we'll, away some of my picks. No, we'll we'll go with his last. That way, you and I can be the surprise because we have our priorities straight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my my indie game, my Swellness Award goes to Beat Saber. Hmm. Uh, by Beat Games uh, for PSVR, also on the Oculus and Rift. Um, it is a VR rhythm music lightsaber game, and it's super it's super accessible. I think anyone can play that game. I am playing on PSVR. Um, you don't necessarily have to be great at rhythm, but you feel yourself becoming better with rhythm. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about it last night. I was talking about that with Pat Man. There's a weird thing that happens in that game where you realize, like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore, but my body's just doing it right. Muscle memory? Yeah, like, it just takes over. And then when you realize that's happening, you start missing everything. (laughs) Um, It reminds me, that game reminds me of the first time I played Guitar Hero. The first time I played Rock Band or DJ Hero, those things where I'm like, this is a super cool experience that, that I don't know why it took so long to exist. And it looks super simple and, like, there's nothing to it. You're just chopping red and 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 blue blocks, but... That game is challenging and fun, and I really feel like 
that game is is doing something different in VR that was so simple, mm-hmm. um, and they're doing it the right way, and it will lead to clones already exist to this game. There's like a beat mania or something where you're like slicing with these weird stick cone I, things. There's like there's like four of them that released like yeah. last week on, on so, the PlayStation. You know, obviously you can see the impact of this game, but. There's there's so much love and care, and it's one of the few games that when I play, I'm sweating after I get done, on purpose. Um, and it, it is it's fun every single time. I put everyone who has stepped foot in my house in that game in VR, and everybody has the same experience. You watch it, and you're like, eh, but you put it on, you're like, oh, shit. I have lightsabers, I'm chopping blocks in half, and it feels good. Uh, I think that game makes a ton of sense. I, I think you could have put this under a lot of categories. For me, it fell under best indie. Uh, again, uh, beat games, and you should check that game out if you have the way a way to play it. I now I, the only time I played it, I have I have dabbled in it. I don't own it, but I played it on the Oculus when I was at FC three this year, and I just dabbled in it. I was in it for like three minutes, so mm-hmm. I really didn't get a feel for the game. But I can see where that fun. Yeah, when from. you get comfortable in your house to get a little more rhythmy, mm-hmm. like especially you play that game when nobody's in your home, you crank up the headphones and you just start feeling it. It's all right. I could definitely, I can definitely see that just from my few yeah. minutes that I played. You probably don't look cool, but you feel cool. Well, I can tell you from watching people <laughs> that, that 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 you don't look cool. I've seen people actually dance along with with playing the game, and it's pretty incredible. But obviously, I, I can't dance. I don't really have rhythm, uh, and the, and I can even play the game. So, R- really cool time. And uh, like again, I can't say enough about it. Gerald's pick for best indie, mm-hmm. twenty eighteen Moss by Polyarch. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That is his pick. It is a uh, PSVR exclusive, I should say. Yes. Polyarch I games. I haven't played it. I want to play it. Yeah, we'll talk about Moss, I'm sure. Probably. I'm sure it'll come up somewhere along the way. Now, did, uh, did, did you have any, um, you know, almost rands, honorable mentions, anything like that? In, uh, for your I've got games? a ton of honorable mentions, but here's the thing. I didn't break them out into categories. Okay. So I don't know how we should do them. I mean, I could just throw them out as we get closer to the end. Yeah, but I think we'll finish up with honorable mentions. We'll finish up with games that should get a mention. Yeah, because I've got some stuff on here, but it, it could go in a couple categories. But yeah, the, sure. Best independent game for me, you know, almost everything I play. Mm-hmm. You know, I, like I love, I love those kind of games, and uh, you could almost take. There's a few exceptions, but I mean, you could almost take more than half my list and put it in that category. So right. Um, one of my favorite categories. Why we wanted to lead off with it. I'm just interested. Uh, I'm interested to see if one of the games that I would have thought might have been your indie pick would be on there. I'm, I'm interested to hear what your honorable, honorable mention. It may are. exist somewhere else. It, okay. Or, or may so some of these categories were tough for me because That's I wanted true. to put it one place, but it could also go somewhere else. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else for best indie? I've, I've no. Uh, I've got Hellblade: Sunny with Sacrifice. You've got. Beat Saber, and Gerald has Moss. Next category. Best music. Best music. So well, You lead. I'll time. lead we'll on this turns. one. Best music. You know, for me, this means, obviously, this could be a fit for, you know, a music rhythm style game. Uh, I probably could have put Beat Saber here. But for me, music is what brings you into a game and really makes you feel while you're playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes the moment bigger. It makes the... You know, it makes the quiet moments even more quiet when when they take the music away. So for me, it was it was everything, and I went with God of War, Sony Santa Monica here. Um, that's it's a game I bounced off of relatively quick, but it's the game that I was super super uh, blown away. It's production value, the care, the love. Uh, if I had the time to play that game, I would have. Uh, but I think that game is exponentially better because of the music that is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough that Sony felt comfortable to bring an orchestra out to play it. Right. Exactly. Um, and I think that music could stand on its own. I think if you put that on for people who listen to that kind of music, it stands. Uh, I think the amount of, of, like I said, attention to detail and love they put into that really shows. And I think it helps make that game what it is. And it's part of the vision. Uh, so for me, when I thought about the games I played this year, it was almost, this category is one of the easiest for me. Right. Uh, I think that that game is, 
is a, 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 a easy clear pick for me for for best music. So that's Game of the, God of War again, Sony Santa Monica. Well, this category was also incredibly easy for me as well. Um, a reason being because it's God of War. <laughs> You're right. By Santa Monica. What reasons <laughs> would you uh, have for that? The reason is, is it, my reason for music uh, is similar to yours, but in some ways even a little different. Um, what I do look for when I play a game, it's not very often when I'm playing a game or even watching a movie. Um, the score is usually very underlying for me. I know it's there, but it's almost at a subconscious level. I'm just so focused on what I'm doing. When I played God of War, I was aware of the music at every single moment that I was playing that game. It mm-hmm. accented where it needed to accent. It decrescendoed where it needed to decrescendo. It it um, it acted as a guide to what you were supposed to feel at the throughout the game, rather than telling you, you know, your big bumping orchestra. Oh, now is where you're supposed to be excited. You didn't get that from God of War. It was, while it was, the music itself was very bombastic. What it was trying to portray to you was was actually very subtle. And that is not easy for any score to do, whether it be video game, TV, movie, play, any of those things. And God of War, throughout the entirety of the game, walked that balance so perfectly that to me there is no other pick and if i could piggyback off of that a little bit you know where you're saying it guides you but it does so for me without being like heavy-handed right and and i think that is really hard to do because i think sometimes music guides you or wants to guide you so hard that it forces you to feel a certain way exactly uh, when you it doesn't feel natural when you hear certain music sometimes you know the way you're supposed to feel or you or sometimes it that music even telegraphs what's coming. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, here's where so and so jumps in and save the day. It's coming. Um, not so in God of War. Even though I was aware of the music, it never telegraphed what was happening or what was right. going to happen. It didn't telegraph the path of the game. Uh, and like I said, it's that's a very very hard line to walk. And Sony Santa Monica did it for the entirety of the game. Gerald's pick for best music is Beat Saber. And I would say that uh, when I first started Beat Saber, I was like immediately, kind of like Rocket League, where I was like, I don't like any of this music. <laughs> uh, but I love the gameplay. But I will say that it, the music has 100% grown on me. Mm-hmm. And more than once I've walked around the house maybe muttering $100 bills, which will make sense to anybody that's played. <laughs> uh, but it's... Uh, I think it's a good pick for that. I think it's it's maybe a little on the nose picking a music game, uh, but we'll let it slide because he's not here. I, it's fine. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know, he's not here to to say why. But I would, I do think the music grew on me just exactly like Rocket League. I love that music too, and that's not music I would listen to traditionally, right? Uh, but when those songs come on, I kind of like them. They remind me of yeah. Rocket League and now Beat Saber. So. All right. uh, that is Gerald's pick. Uh, the next category. Best multiplayer. Best multiplayer. That's a fun category. It is. I think mine's going to actually surprise you. Uh, maybe. I think. I can tell you that Gerald's does not surprise me. <laughs> uh, my favorite, or uh, my pick for best multiplayer is Sea of Thieves by Rare. Um, Honestly... To be honest, I haven't played it as much as you have or mm-hmm. as much as Howard has. Uh, and there were times when I did shit on that game. <laughs> but to me, multiplayer isn't about the competitiveness. It isn't about what it brings. It's about the experience you have and the experience of sailing the seas with three, four, five other people that are your friends that you know and going from island to island and finishing the message and finishing missions is like no other experience you will have in a multiplayer game that is uh, that 
that is around that, that we have available to us now. There is no other experience like that. And it's my understanding is, even though I haven't gotten back to it, it's continued to get better and better and better. And I keep meaning to get back to it, and then I don't because something else, I play something else or something else comes up or Rocket the, League comes out with a new Rocket Pack. Whatever happens, I don't get back to it, and I mean to, and I want to. This category was tough for me, like very tough. Which is odd it, because it, you so Sea of Thieves is one of those about. games. You know, it's one of those games I had up there. It's, I mean, it's in my honorable mentions for that reason. But I was like, you know, when I think about the best multiplayer time I had this year, you know, it, it's hard not to think about Rocket League or a game mm-hmm. that has been out for years because that's mm-hmm. where we spend most of our time. Right. Um, but then I played a lot of other things that were really unique. But, you know, when, when I sat down to think about these categories and, and I really just thought back on the year and what did... You know, what was a special moment for me? Um, and and so I've gone with Firewall Zero Hour here. Uh, First Which, Contact Entertainment, Sony Interactive Entertainment. I kind of uh, anticipated. Uh, I will tell you this is also Gerald's pick for multiplayer. Um, so we can get that out of the way. Um, but I don't know. There's something so special about th- that game when you have four people. Yes, now, when you I, have if, four people... That you have for your friends with, I agree. It, it's definitely different when you're playing with Strange, and I did play with Strange several times. But Sea of Thieves is one of those games where it's like there's fun moments for me, mm-hmm. but there's moments that are kind of boring or not so fun. Or I, I'd like to do something different. But Firewall is intense and fun and quick, and every single match when it works it is is amazing to me. Like. There's a lot of games where you, you you say to yourself, like, if we worked better as a team, that wouldn't have happened, or X, Y, or Z. But, like, the matches are so quick, and you have to play as a team. Like, we were playing the other night, and just <laughs> the way everybody's talking, it's like, hey, I'm with him, I'm with him. Okay, turn left, there's a guy up here. We'll flank him while you guys are shooting at him. I don't know, there's something, the teamwork in that game, that it brings out in such a simple way. I like the aim controllers. I, again, there's a lot of VR games on my list, because I really enjoy VR. Uh, but when we were able to play the other night, I really had a blast playing that game. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, we were talking about this last night. I really feel like everybody did a great job. And it's it's not very often you feel that way when you're playing with four people. Right. But, yeah, there was – when we played the other night, I what, we won like eight or ten games in a row, I think. Yeah, there was no weak link because we were playing as a team. Yeah, and, and we were covering each other and we were communicating and – it just doesn't happen. I mean, there was times where we all went out early, but the rest of the team like, like made it happen. And I don't know. It, there's just something that game is so simple in the way that it's set up, and the design, and the maps are small and it, and tight, and it feels good. It get, you know, VR gets a little wonky sometimes, but it doesn't take away from that experience. And I hope they stick with that game. And they they just released a new map, but um, it's it's got tons of microtransactions if you want to buy that stuff, but just the gameplay itself is fun. I'm still playing on the loadouts. I think all of us are still playing on the, the original loadouts. Yeah, I haven't bought anything. Yeah, me either, and uh, I don't know. We played the other night. I would have literally played all night long if everybody could have stayed on and the servers didn't go down. Yeah. Like, that game uh, was... We had a phenomenal time. And it wasn't just because we were winning. It was just because we were playing as a team without having to talk about trying to play as a team. It's because we were playing well. It was just that natural. We were just communicating. Boom, yeah, it boom. Did, it didn't matter who went with who. I was never like disappointed yep. when someone went with somebody else. Like I didn't care. Yep. Because we all had this. We knew what we needed to do. We were all we talking. Did that. We were communicating and we were covering. Oh, I got two up here. Okay, I'm behind you. I'm going to throw a smoke grenade and you know where they're at. So you jump in and kill them. And those plans would come together and you're like, holy fuck, I'm a yeah. seal. <laughs> I'm a Navy fucking SEAL. <laughs> so that's Firewall what? Zero Hour, First Contact Entertainment, and Sony Interactive Entertainment. And again, Sea of Thieves, uh, I love Sea of Thieves. I love the idea of being a pirate. That game, to me, is, is almost brought down by the fact that other people are playing it alongside of you. Uh, the mm-hmm. griefers, if you will. But I absolutely love Sea of Thieves. And I, if, if you have Game Pass and haven't played it, you should jump on. And that game is, is, is a world better now than it was when it came out. Yes, it well, Yes, it is. From what but, I understand, I haven't played it, but um, and it's it's interesting. I find it interesting that we actually picked two different types of experiences that actually reflect our personalities. You are very much more run and gun. 
um, which plays into to, to a three minute match and 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 that and firewall I doesn't am, doesn't punish you for playing that way, right? But it doesn't necessarily reward you, so I think that's why it works, right? And I am when I play, I definitely like the slower experiences and those kinds of things, and that's why because I fire, I, I was a toss up between those two. It really was, yeah, and. When when it really came down to it, I was like, you know what? Just the experience that that, that Sea of Thieves gives you that slow lulling. Because uh, I mean, I could literally just sail a boat. All, right. I don't need to do anything else. I can literally just sail. I'm and okay with that. We've had some that. amazing times in Sea of Thieves. Like that. That's why it was so tough for me. And there was even a couple more that I probably could have thrown in here. But uh, I'm just thinking back, and maybe it's just a product of how recent it was, but. The other night when all four of us got on, I really had a Oof. blast in Firewall, That's... and I felt like we were a team, like, like come at us. Right. Like, I mean, you were like, okay, you know what? Sign me up. Esports, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had that moment, and, and we were playing awesome, and it was just it was a ton of fun. Again, that's Gerald's pick also. I have to assume for all mm-hmm. the exact reasons I just named. That's what, Probably. That's what I'm assuming. Fair assumption. Uh, n- next category. Best VR game slash experience. I put that either way because best VR game slash experience because I don't know. Some Sometimes maybe it's not a game in VR. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, but I think in this case it will be a game for all three of us. Okay. But I put that just in case. I didn't gotcha. know if Gerald wanted to pick an experience. Uh, obviously enough. all of us are playing on PSVR. I guess that's worth noting. Yes. Um, all of our picks will, I assume, come from that platform. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Gerald, he'll throw you a curveball every now and then. Now, did you go first last time or did I? I you did. did. See it, Thieves. Okay, so I'll, I'll lead this one off. Uh, best VR game slash experience. I went with Moss by Polyarc Games. Uh, this was tough for me, too. Like, really tough. Because I think most of the VR games on this list are totally interchangeable. Mm-hmm. I think you know, one of the games I'm going to talk about in my honorable mention is absolutely deserving of this award also. Right. But there was something special about Moss and how much it drove me to want to play it every day. When I went to work, I wanted to come home and play it. When I was playing Rocket League, I wanted to play it. When I was doing anything other than playing it, I wanted to play it. Um, It's smart. It's a puzzle game, but it without being a puzzle game. It doesn't feel like a puzzle game or look like a puzzle game, but it is. Um, you don't have to be a genius to play it. All the answers are simple. Howard's playing it right now. And I told him if it's complicated, you're doing it the wrong way. Right. Like that's the beauty of what Moss is. And it's short, you know, most VR experiences are short. It's, it's, you know, six, five, six hours, whatever. He actually completed it today. And his first text to me, I beat Moss. When's, when's the next part coming? (laughs) Like that, that, that game does that to you. I think it's such a, a unique idea. Quill. The main character is she is hard not to love and hard not to get attached to when you're playing the game. You don't want her to die. Uh, it's the kind of game I think anyone could play. You know, if you got in VR and spent 10 minutes, you could play. There's not much to it, but it's it's a special, special game. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was made it was made with a lot of love and care, and it doesn't feel like a copy of anything else. Um, again, I think there's a handful of games you could have put here. All the nominees that you saw at the game awards, I think we're all fitting here. All the ones on my list, I think are all fitting uh, for this category. Uh, but when I think back to the moment I was most excited to play VR, it's probably that one. Uh, so Moss, Polyarg digital, probably probably our games. Okay. Uh, my pick for reasons we already spoken of is firewall zero hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think there's a need to, expand on that but as far as the experience you get from that uh i think it is the i I enjoy everything in vr i still want to play moss i haven't uh it's one i plan on picking up but as far as the games that i have played in vr i've enjoyed many of them i've had a great time with many of them and they're great games uh there is no other experience in vr like firewall zero hour i do agree with that it is it is unique and it is is special um, Gerald's pick for a uh, best VR game slash experience is Astrobot. Mm. That would be Sony Japan and Sony Interactive Entertainment. Another um, one I want to pick up because you've told me good things about it. Yeah, this 
this is in my honorable mentions. I'll just tell you, I, I, I love Astro Bot. I think it's deserving of any of these awards. It is the most I've ever felt like I was playing a Nintendo game on a different console. Mm-hmm. There's that level of care and detail and love put into that game. Astro Bot is, is, is super, super, super good. It just, as good as it was, there was something, was a little magic in Moth. Uh, right. it, edged, it edged out Astro Bot for me. Uh, Gerald actually has my copy of Astro Bot right now. Oh. So, helping with the game of the year deliberation. So, that's that's Gerald's pick is Astro Bot. <laughs> Again, that's Sony Japan. And that's another and, one that I, I plan on, on trying as well. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a damn good one. On to the next category. Most Influential. Most Influential. And now it's my turn. It is to your go turn. first. For me, the most influential game, there's a lot of different ways to interpret influential, I suppose. I think you'll see that when I go over my pick also. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways to interpret it. Um, my pick for most influential is actually a game I've already mentioned. Uh, that game is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Uh, the reason it's the most influential is because Ninja Theory showed you can make an indie experience that feels like a triple A experience that looks like a triple A experience for a quarter, if not less of the money, not just that they have to spend, but that, that the consumer has to spend. This game came out, it was $30. Um, that is a huge step forward for showing other indie companies look what you can do with not much money uh it ha- we haven't quite gotten where we need to be with that yet no one's taken those reins on from what i've seen um but i would assume that probably some of these vr experiences are very similar uh they're not putting quite as much money into them so for that reason because of what they've shown can be done and how independent gaming can be done to be um, attractive to AAA players and to compete with the AAA experience for significantly less money, Hellblade Sending a Sacrifice is my most influential. And we talked about that when that game came out. Like we hoped that that double A that double A market would almost start to exist again. Right. Where you're making excellent games at a lower price point and it hasn't taken off like I would have hoped. And Microsoft's purchase of them may even change the way they're doing it. But, right. um, yeah, I, I agree that that was a, a big step and hopefully something that still catches on. You know, VR is pro- probably a product of game length because for some reason people seem to think length e- equals value, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't I don't like. I think that's bad thinking. I think that's old school thinking. We've talked about it before. I agree. But, you know, I, 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 lo- I like that pick. I'll just tell you right now, Gerald's pick is God of War. I'm sure for all the reasons one would think that that game was influential. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to deviate real hard with my pick, so I thought it best to get his out of the way. <laughs> so my pick for most influential Swellness Award 2018 is uh, Nintendo Labo. It's kind of a I cheat. Can... There's three different ones out now. Um, but I, can, I'm just, I, can, I can see it, though. Uh, I'm going to keep it general. It's Nintendo EPD and Nintendo proper. Um, I think... <sighs> are you going to see cardboard games pop up? Yeah, there's a few out there. That's not what I mean. I don't mean that everybody's going to be like, let's scrap the games and make cardboard. But everybody, and I mean everybody, shit on this when it came out and was cardboard. Mm-hmm. And then I they got wondering. it in their hands, and they were like, hold on. Labo is the closest thing to Lego that I've ever done. Right. In the way that it calms me, in the way that you have to have a, like a level of focus while you're doing it. And in, in the loving care and the design of those, the things that you build, mm-hmm. like it, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, I don't want to take away from people who do paper craft because there's probably way more skill involved in that because this has instructions and it's all laid out for me. But there's an element of art to making these things, like getting good creases and making sure everything is right. And when you get done seeing that finished product and it all came from flat sheets of cardboard. Right. Um, and I think this shows that no matter how cheap or silly something seems, like if you do it the right way, you can make something really special for people. The instructions are incredible, uh, the way they work on the switch and the way you 
move forward and back. You know, all the instructions are animated. So it's not just fold this flap up. You see that flap fold up. Uh, it's so smartly done. And I, if, if I was suggesting, I would say buy the variety kit or buy the vehicle pack. I think the vehicle pack has the best game. If you want to actually have a corresponding game, um, I think you could pick up the the vehicle or the uh, the variety pack a lot cheaper now. I see it on sale sometimes. The robot pack I think is very expensive for one game mm-hmm. and one build. Uh, but I mean, you're talking about some builds, the piano and stuff taking well over two hours to build. Uh, so, you know, even if you don't care for the games, any parents that can build with kids, I think this is putting families back at tables the same way Legos do. Um, I think Labo is influential in in ways totally different than influencing a cardboard generation. You know, I don't think you're going to see everything come out, but there's some copies at target right now. I saw the other day that are pretty <laughs> absurd, but um, I just think the, the fact that Nintendo continues to find fun in places where no one else looks is, is pretty influential. And, and the thing about Nintendo is I was, I'll just, by the way, uh, just to clear this up. Yeah. I was one of those people that shit on cardboard. Um, <laughs> I was. I'm not going to lie. Um, once it came out, I did say I think it's a stupid idea, but we'll wait and see what comes out because it's Nintendo. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. But for the most part, I just shit on the cardboard. Um, but yes, I, I agree. What they what, what Nintendo does is they take something that is fucking ridiculous and they meld it somehow with video games and everybody buys this shit and it comes out okay. Um how they do it, I don't know, but they they take they, they take shit turds and smash them in their hands and squish them around <laughs> and yeah, they have fucking diamonds. I don't understand how they do it, but they do it. We talked about it a lot. It's like sometimes there's not somebody in the room to tell somebody else it's something's not a good idea. Uh huh. Nintendo seems to mostly always have that person in the room somehow. Yeah. And it's like they they don't necessarily give up on it when it's not a good idea. They just keep working until it is a good idea. If, if, you know, the Labo's like 80 bucks or whatever, if I spent $80 and I, there was no game, right, I just built those things, I would uh-huh. feel like I got my money's worth. Right. The fact that they interact and, and do all the game stuff, I really don't care about. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a fair pick. It's I do. neat. I do it's think extra, it's a- but yeah, I think it's it's pretty incredible that they were able to do, to make something that impressive out of cardboard. Yeah, in, in, hind- in hindsight, knowing what I know now, I have no problem with your pick. I yeah. see it. So... That's uh, Hellblade for you. That's God of War for Gerald, and that's Labo for me. Onward and upward. Moving on. Next category. Most disappointing. Most disappointing. Mm. Your turn. Fun category again. <laughs> so I'm there. A little caveat up front here. I have not played my choice for most disappointing. That's how disappointing it was. Because I was 100% going to buy it, and now we're where we are right now. You were so let down that you wouldn't even play it. Right. And I would play it. I just, it hasn't, it's not even to a point yet where I feel like it, it would be okay to start playing it. Um, I won't leave anybody hanging longer. It's Fallout 76. I'll tell you, this is also Gerald's pick. Uh, Bethesda Game Works. Uh, I, I feel like I almost don't even need to go into this. The game was not ready to come out when it came out. Mm-hmm. This, you know, when I found out it was Fallout with friends, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely in. And I found out people could blow up your stuff, and I'm like, I'm definitely out. And they said, Yeah, but there's no point to it. And I was like, Oh, I'm back in again. And then, as we got closer, you were like, I'm out. Other people were like, I'm out. I'm like, Oh man, there's, there's not anybody really left. And then it came out, and it was bad. Yeah, like real bad, <laughs> like unfinished bad. <laughs> Like we're giving away free games bad. Um, and then it's misstep after misstep. They took a huge price cut. They fucked up the collector's edition bags. They accidentally released everybody's information online. Like it was misstep after misstep with this game. Yep. And uh I think you could pick you could point to the disappointment all the way around. Uh, they they also announced their games that are fucking seventeen years away. Like Bethesda knew this game was bad. Yep. And they released it, and I I don't like the idea of it. It sold a shit ton because it's Fallout, and uh, I hope they make it right. (coughs) If they don't make it right, I will tell you it's absolutely unacceptable because if a team like Hello Games can make No Man's Sky right, then they can fucking fix Fallout 76. 
I I agree one hundred percent. And I and I will buy Fallout seventy six if they ever fix it, and I have friends who are playing it. I want to play that game, but I think I want to play what it is in my head and not what it actually is. Right. So. So you maybe for that out. and a million reasons I didn't name. That is my most disappointing. Fair enough. Uh, well, well, my most disappointing I did play. Um, I was going to cheat and say there was a tie. I've changed my mind on that. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to cheat. I realize it's my fucking show. I can do what I want. Cheat away. Um, but, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think that's fair. Um, we all have to make sacrifices. And, and mine is not cheating. So my pick for most disappointing, which if you've listened to the podcast, is probably not going to surprise anybody, but that is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. This is the third game in the trilogy. I so wanted to see how Laura went from, how Laura Croft went from that girl on the island who crashed on the island and had to survive to how she became the Tomb Raider. And instead what I got was fucking sneak simulator was shooting people every now and then and a game that could not figure out what it wanted to say about its protagonist. They want Laura Croft, they want her to be this heartfelt person who loves these other cultures and wants to take care of them and, and, and is worried about the children and cares about people and doesn't want to th- see bad things to people. And, then she causes a bad thing to happen to people, and in order to fix it, she kills a bunch of people. And what the fuck? Who is this person? They couldn't. Uh, th- the story that they wanted to tell about Laura Croft could not be. Um, it's a word I'm looking for. Shit. Um, uh, it could not fit with what they wanted the gameplay to be. Um, and it could not correspond. That's the word I'm looking for. Correspond. The person they wanted Glorcroft to be in the story they were trying to tell could not coincide, correspond with the gameplay in the game. Um, and for that, I was incredibly, I, when I first started playing, I was like, cool, Tomb Raider, into it, can't wait, want to finish this <laughs> game. The further along I got, I was like, I, I don't even want to turn this on anymore. I'm not having fun with this game anymore. This is tough for me because I actually have this under my honorable mentions for most disappointing uh, because I wouldn't have put it under there for any other category. Um, But the same thing, like I was ready to play this and you were getting it first. I knew you were going to get it and you got it and you were jazzed up about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm jazzed up about it. And then I was like telling, I was telling you, hey, a lot of people are not, not loving this thing. And you're like, no, no, I'm good. And then like two days later, you're like, I'm not so good. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, I'm, and then I, I kept, I kept to, asking though, because I, I want, I want to play this game. I want to love this game. And you're like, it's really, it's not good at all. And I'm like, not like any, like I wouldn't like it any. You're like, no, it's not good. I, and that broke my heart. I like the first couple of, um, the, the beginning is good. The way it starts, the beginning of the game is good. Because that's the Laura Croft you know and love. When they start introducing her to the other cultures and trying to turn her, all of a sudden, they try to like fast forward her into the Tomb Raider and make her, it just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work. And that's where they lost me. Yeah, it's super disappointing. This, this easily could have been my most disappointed. Also a game I haven't played, but... <sighs> I mean, it got to a point. It got to a point. I played this game for three and a half weeks, mm-hmm. and it was fun for about the first four days. And after that, I was like, "Well, I got. I want to see what happens." And I would push <laughs> further and further. I'm going to see got, it through. And as I got further and further, this the, uh, the character became more and more disassociated from the gameplay. And I'm like, "What in the hell?" She's telling this. She's shooting everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then in the next, she's doing side quests where she's saving everybody. Well, which is it? Right. Yeah, it's disappointing. I wanted to love that game a lot. And they just, they could never, it never, it, it the further along it got, the less and less that s- story versus gameplay worked for me. And it 
I was just like, I'm done. I'm not going back to it. I just remember me asking over and over if it was any better because I wanted to love that game so much. I still want to play it. And that's what I was waiting for when I played it. I was waiting for that hump. I'm like, okay, this is maybe it's just a spot. Maybe it's just one of those things, like a storytelling lull or some sort of they couldn't figure out what to do. Nope. And it's so weird because the first and second game, you know, the first game rose, the second game plateaued, uh, the third game starts to stay on that plateau, and then it just plummets. I don't know. I think it's yeah, sad thinking about it, really. It is. I really that is. wanted to finish it. That is Eidos Montreal. Yes. Crystal Dynamics obviously gets a nod here, but it wasn't their game this time around. Mm-mm, it was Eidos. Yeah, so uh, super disappointing. Again, Gerald's uh, same as mine, Fallout 76. So should we? do you want to save the honorable mentions? For, we have three three awards left. Do you want to save the honorable mentions for the very end? Yeah, we can do that. I won't speak up. I'll just name them. Yeah. Move on. Yeah, just games that should get a mention. Okay, so let's roll into... Semi-Chub of the Year. Our Semi-Chub. For those that don't know, this is our almost game of the year. Came up just a little bit short. You know, like you got sort of a stiffy, but not really. Yeah. You're not quite as swell as you thought you might be. Mm-hmm. That's what this game is. So, okay. don't let this take anything away. These games are absolutely incredible. They just yes. came up bare, like, like a hair short yep. of that Game of the Year award. The swellest game of them all. Uh, so, is it my turn or your turn? It's my turn. Your turn. I hope you didn't pick uh, what I picked. My semi-chub... I may have. <laughs> my semi-chub runner-up for... Game of the Year, Swellness Award, I guess. Uh, Semi-Chub is God of War. We did not pick the same thing, but I will say really quick, you and Gerald picked the same thing. Okay. God of War is my... This game is phenomenal. I've already talked about the music. The the arc that, that, that uh, Kratos goes through and the amazing... There's an amazing twist at the end that is telegraphed the entire way through that if you're not paying attention, you completely miss and you're like, whoa, what the fuck's going to happen next in the next game? Uh, combat is is great. Side quests are optional. You could do them. You don't have to. Um, but when I talk about my swellness award, I will tell you, I'll explain more about it. God of War is without a doubt a game everybody should play, but there was one game that did more for me this year. So my semi chub of the year goes to Marvel Spider Man. <laughs> so well, I'm sure we'll probably hear more about this. Um, but that game, I'm not a Spider Man fan. I'm not a superhero mm-hmm. fan. Um, I don't hate the Tobey Maguire movies if that tells you anything. Oh, I <laughs> me either. <laughs> I think those those movies get shit on way too much, but um, I expected this game to be fun. I didn't expect to care about the characters, the story, anything in it, uh, and I did. From the second you swing out of that apartment, you're like, "Fuck yes, I am Spider Man as a as a mug right now." It felt good. It felt the movement. I could just like you could sail around Sea of Thieves. I could just swing around that city of Spider Man. Yep. I understand. I got all the collectibles right off the bat because I was like, I just want to swing around and I just want (laughs) to be Spider-Man. The story, I think it's one of the few games I stuck with. I finished. I think the the writing is is really good. The voice acting is great. The music is great. Uh, I I really love that game. And I didn't expect to at all, so it was very surprising. Um, But that's my pick for the semi show of the year, Spider-Man. Uh, it, that again, that is, uh, Insomniac. I don't guess I, we've said it yet, but that's Insomniac, uh, mm-hmm. with a little assistance from Sony Interactive hey, Entertainment. That's a solid pick, man. It's a solid pick. Yeah. That's a, it was a lot uh, of fun. I enjoyed my time I, with Spider-Man. I won't take that bad boy away from me at all. Uh, so next I think we're going to do most anticipated for 2019. Most anticipated. Is that where you're at? That sounds great. Okay. Uh, so this is my turn to lead off. So uh, no fear here that we picked the same game because uh, I have Media Molecules Dreams as my I most anticipated. I fucking knew it. <laughs> um, this game is too long in the making. At this point, I wish they would just punt it to PS5. Uh, 
but I, you know, the betas are rolling out. I have to assume this game is coming out in 2019. That's what they've said. So mm-hmm. uh, I do have this on my list. I'm super excited. I love those guys. Uh, they they are on the same wavelength as I am. Like they make games for me. Well, Terrific. at this point, you're probably the only one who's buying it. So. Yeah, and and it's probably the death of the studio. But I, I can guarantee you that that game will be incredible for what it is. Uh, games will come out of that game that will eventually end up being sold. Yeah, probably. Even if right. that's just a test run for it. And uh, I am so excited about Dreams, and I think Dreams is going going to be something special. It won't be for everybody. Um, it probably will not sell well at all. It would be a Ballsy but great move for Sony to give this thing away as part of PlayStation Plus. Yeah. If they just day one said Dreams is free from whatever, April 2019, there's there, I don't know what the tell of that game looks like. It's probably massive uh, because people will start creating, other people will start playing, and that ecosystem will live for a long time. So uh, I'm really excited about Dreams uh, if you haven't seen it. Look up something on it. You've heard me talk about it a lot, but that's that's my most anticipated 2019. Yeah, I knew Dreams was the one for you. My most anticipated game is probably not going to surprise anyone if you remember how much I love the first one, The Division Two. Yeah, not going to surprise <laughs> me at all for sure. <laughs> uh, they the. I put I put a I quit playing it now. But I put a lot of hours into the first division. I put a lot of hours into the first division before it became the the good game, the great game that it apparently is now. I played it when there was not much to do in the end game. And I played the shit out of it and I loved every minute of it. I can't explain it. I am normally not an MMO guy who wants to put that kind of time into it. Uh, I don't like, I'm normally not a guy who just likes to go for the grind. I loved all that shit in the division. I love that story. I love that setting. And I am super excited for the division too, especially if they fixed, if they come out out of the gate, like they finished with the division, dude, I am so in. (laughs) <laughs> you might not hear from me for I don't know how long. More puffy jackets and gloves. Oh, I can't wait. That, that shit kept me going, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, obviously I, I that wasn't a game that, that hit with me, but a lot of people really speak fondly of The Division, and I think Division 2 will, will start where that left off, and I think that that'll do really well for them. Well, I, another thing about The Division, I think it was um, the first game – where Ubisoft, Ubisoft started doing that new Ubisoft thing they do. Where they just keep tweaking. They refuse to let it fail. Uh, what's that? They refuse to let them fail. They did it with Wildlands. They did it with Rainbow yep. Six Siege. Yep. They did it with... Yep. Um, they even tried to do it with that shitty Steep game that they made. Yes. Wasn't that them? That's them. That's Ubisoft. Yeah. Yep. Um, um but they continue to let they do not let these games fail. They continue to tweak them and make the adjustments. They listen to the fans. For honor. For honor is another yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Um and they just keep turning it into it's almost like the community has a say because they almost start to make the tweaks to turn it into that vision that that that, that the people that are playing it have. Um and I mean you I mean there's games that were just a that Everyone swore we're dead. Rainbow Six Siege. That game Everyone flatlined s- on launch. That game went nowhere. And all the, it's got a steady stream of players. It's pretty massive now, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what Ubisoft and Division was the first game, I think, where Ubisoft used that strategy that I can think of. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, the Division 2, I can't fucking wait. Uh, Gerald's got, he sent me two picks here. One of them though, I am absolutely sure will come out in 2019. The other, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent. So I'm going to go with the one that I'm sure of. Um, and I, this is a, uh, maybe an odd choice. Uh, days gone. Really? Yeah. Days gone. Like I said, he sent me two. I'm going to go with the one I'm for sure is coming out in 2019. I'm pretty sure I know what the second one is. Uh, yeah. And so days gone, his selection, I think 
I hope that game's not as bad as everybody seems to think that game's going to be and as bad as that first hour they released looked like. Right. Uh, they took more time, but I'm real scared for that game. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and with that said, as far as anticipated goes, there are a bunch of good games coming out. this year. I mean, you've got, I don't know if they're good, but anticipated games. You crack down three. Uh, Anthem. It was, it was actually a toss-up between Anthem and... Um, uh, the Division 2 for me. But in the end, I, I got to go with the Division 2. Uh, I love Bioware to death. And I really, 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 really enjoyed that that alpha that I played. But the Division, man. <laughs> Tom Clancy's a Division. Ryan knows. If, you, if you've listened, you know. Yeah, you've talked significantly about that game. <laughs> I had no doubt that you were ever going to pick that game. So... <laughs> Uh, I knew the I knew that Anthem was something you were excited about, but I had no doubt you were going to pick. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm all in. I'm I'm actually I'm probably going to take a couple days off when that game comes yeah. out of work and play it incessantly. <laughs> and that brings us to our last, our final, the big one, the show stopper, the swellest award of the year for 2018, the swellest game of the year. Bestest. Bestest, most swellest. Full bone. This is it. This is it. This is a big one. It's a big one. one. The mother load. The the Mac Daddy. You get it? Swellness? The mother load? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Emphasis on load. You know what I'm saying? And not spelled the way you think it is. (laughs) This is your turn, right? (laughs) It's my turn. You get to kick this one off. This is a dangerous one to get to kick off because if you steal mine here, you take the thunder. I didn't. Okay. (laughs) I didn't. Don't worry. And the reason being because my Swellness Award of 2018, the best game of the year, goes to your semi-chub. I thought that might be the case. Marvel Mm Spider-Man. This was a tough one. It was definitely a toss-up between God of War and Spider-Man. As far as the... I, I guess... The depth of the lore and the depth of the story, God of War takes it. Um, Marvel Spider Man had an amazing story. You talked about it music, uh, characters just swinging through the city. Just a complete damn package. But the biggest thing that this brought that God of War didn't is Marvel's Spider Man was incessantly, consistently. No way they're not going to let you forget it. Fun. Every moment of everything you do in that game is fun. 100%. God of War is a fun game to play. It tells a great story. But there are parts of it that it's drudging combat and it's dark and it's down. And yes, it brings you back up. Uh, Some of the uh, combat in it is amazingly hard. Uh, granted, some of that is side content, but it's all part of that game, and we're talking about a full game here. Uh, and to the point where, even though I wanted to, I wanted to platinum God of War. I did not want to put in the work that needed to be put in to do that. Was not fun for me. Marvel Spider Man. I wanted to platinum, and I didn't. But the reason I didn't is because I'm stupid. I made a mistake, not because of anything the game did at all. It's because I didn't pay attention. And regardless of that fact, that game, all I did every time I played it was have fun. Everything about it is fun. There's stealth missions in it that mo- that aren't great. But you know what? They're still kind of fun. The way they do them is kind of fun. And that is what I needed out of Spider-Man. So that, just just that is the reason that it takes the Swellness Award. And I, and I, I think that pick makes a lot of sense. That game, that game is special. Absolutely special. Um, Gerald's pick here is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I think that pick makes a lot of sense for Gerald. I do too. In the way that he loved Grand Theft Auto and and the games that Rockstar makes. 
I don't have a lot to say about this because I can't speak to it in, in the way that it, it obviously was not my game of the year, uh, but that that's his pick. Um, so we'll jump into mine, mm-hmm. one that I haven't talked about at all on this entire list. It is Detroit Become Human. Mm. That is my 2018 swellest game of the year. And I know some people aren't going to be too excited about that pick. Uh, that's definitely a game with a very heavy handed story. <laughs> they want you to, David Cage wants you to feel the way David Cage feels. Uh-huh. Um, and Hey, I know that it sounds like the working conditions in that place are not optimal. I, I'm not going to get into any of that. I don't know. I don't work there. But what I do know is something about that game. Those quantic dreams games work for me. Like they just, oh, do. I get it. You know, I, I, to- it. I didn't love beyond two souls, but I mean, I f- absolutely fell in love with heavy rain <clears throat> and the characters were good. The game was paced properly. I loved every second of that game. Even if I didn't always agree with its message, I felt like it mm-hmm. didn't matter. I cared for those characters. I cared what happened. There were moments where I was afraid to make a decision because I didn't know where it was going to go, what would happen. And I, Where's and I was gonna lead? actually afraid to lose some of those characters. Uh, that game was, I, I loved Detroit. If, if someone walked in the room right now and was like, that game sucked. I understand. I get that. I get that. You, I get that two people could feel that way about that game. Mm-hmm. I think most people will tell you Spider-Man's great. Most yes. people tell you God of War is great. Most people tell you Red Dead's great. This is a game where most people probably won't tell you anything. But that game was special to me. The character... I was thinking about that game the other day, just unrelated to this. Like, like Marcus and those characters are just fucking good. Um, I, I loved that game. I thought, I thought it was well done, well designed. Uh, and it really forced me to make... There were some decisions I didn't even make, so I got the default because I couldn't decide. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really enjoyed that game. So that's my 2018 swellest game of the year. I do not have a single problem with that pick, and it was one that I tossed about as well. But at the end of the day, I had to. The reason for my pick, from my own personal level, was what's the game that takes me out of my life and is just unbridled, an unbridled good time. Right. There's no thinking, there's no concentrating, there's no focus. It's just me having a good time, staring at a TV, moving my thumbs with a headset on my head. Uh, Now, we tried to do it for everything. I don't know if we skipped any of them, but again, the developers for these games, for Spider-Man Insomniac, for Red Dead Redemption, uh, Rockstar, and for Detroit Become Human Quantic Games, we tried to say them for everybody Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like there's That's a important. lot of people who make these games incredible, and, and it, it saying the and game name is probably not enough in this case because when we when we hand out these awards, we're handing them to everybody, that, down to the guy who designs the marketing poster, mm-hmm. uh, or the lady that I, I don't hey, give you know a shit what? what you do there. That guy who's bringing coffee to people, yeah, yeah, his the, role is just as important as everyone else's. Yeah, the dude that answers phones, the lady that approves every tweet that goes out. Like I don't care what the job. Man, woman, boy, child, giraffe that does it. Like these games wouldn't be what they are without every single person there. So, uh, you know, the whole reason we do this list is just to talk about how great games are and how much we appreciate the people who spend their lives making them for us because it's only five to 25 to 40 to 50 hours for us, Mm -hmm. but it's years for them. And it's everything they have and it's relationships and marriages and kids and, uh, you know, it's fun to turn them on and have a good time with them, but you got to remember how much sacrifice comes along with those games and, and yeah, there's and all the work and dedication that goes into it. We're very lucky that we live in a world where we, where we have this entertainment. Oh this yeah. Form no of entertainment. Doubt. So, um, to all the winners, thank you for creating such amazing uh, experiences mm-hmm. and for everyone who sacrificed, uh, all their time and energy and blood, sweat and tears. Uh, it's definitely not lost on us. We understand, we get it, and we appreciate you guys. So that's it for the awards. I do want to go through these honorable mentions really quick. Sure. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ramble on about why they're great. Uh, the only one that was weird was Tomb Raider, but I'm not gonna read it since I talked about it because it wouldn't mm-hmm. make any sense in this list. Um, honorable mentions though: Overcooked Two, 
Astrobot Rescue Mission, Celeste, Yoku's Island Express, Rocket League. I spent too many hours to not put it on a list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sea of Thieves. So I thought about throwing in Rocket League. Some of my honorable mentions. Um, I actually don't have too many. Um, but uh, Rocket League is one because, again, tons of hours. Uh, Life is Strange 2. Mm-hmm. I played that game more. I'm starting to, to, to and it's starting to get there now. Um, it's starting to get there. Yeah, I saw you playing it. Yeah, it's uh, so I, I don't nod does an amazing job. I I love those guys too. Uh, and uh, I thought I had one more. Oh, a game I haven't played a lot, but again, unbridled fun. Onrush. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking while you were talking that that should have been one I threw on there. Uh, that game's really good. That's Codemasters. Codemasters. Yeah, that game's really fun. Sneaky fun. Yep. When I first time uh, I played it, I'm like, it's okay, but it gets fun. Yep, you do not see it coming. But it, again, it, and that's, it does it's, it does the same thing that, that Spider-Man does. It's yeah. just unbridled fun. It's a completely different type of game. But I, you could just play it, and mm-hmm. it's fine. Now, so, the, just a couple of mine. And Detroit. I did want to throw on Detroit. Um, RDR. To you know the the standards, Gerald um, did not send me any honorable mentions, but I will tell you his second choice for most anticipated was The Last of Us Two. Yeah, I, I knew just, that. I, I, I don't know. If, that. I don't know if that game will be out in 2019. Is why I chose the other, but I want to give credit where it's due. That was his choice there. Obviously, Naughty Dog. Yeah, that was one I was considering as well, and then I had the same thought you did. Was I? That's I don't know. If that's coming this year. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed it. Those are the awards. They're all handed out at this point. We don't actually hand any physical awards out, but you know what we mean. Digitally, we just handed those out. Um, Right. We gave them from our hearts to yours. Again, big thank you to everyone who made those games possible and to the companies that spent millions in uh, in hours, time, all of it. Uh, and, And we love the games that you make. Let us know what you think. Let us know how you would have hand these out let us know what you loved you don't have to yeah. rank them like we did just give us some games that you loved at game underscore stitch on twitter and uh we would love to hear what you like there's probably some games that we overlooked that we should play so mm-hmm. and if you actually want to yell at us about your picks uh i am at shirtless dan on twitter ryan is at podcast ryan on twitter and gerald's at hoffin show and he would definitely like your feedback because he wasn't here oh yeah no yeah, doubt so um, you could send your feedback to me and Dan, but our picks were perfect. So I don't know what you would, I don't know what you would add. So, <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, uh, I want to end by thanking our patrons, mm-hmm. different points during the year. We've had different amount of people who pledged and helped out for this show. You don't have to do that. We know that we appreciate it. Um, it means the world to us. And, uh, you know, we're not going to go into everyone, everyone, but, if we skip you, I'm super sorry, but just a few people, Thomas, Garrett, um, uh, I'm blanking out, Alan, uh, Austin, uh, Josh, uh, these are people that listen every single week, even if they don't write in, Elliot. Elliot. Um, you know, we we love you guys. This You're the reason we do this show, and I know there's a countless other people out there who have never said anything to us but make us a part of their week. Uh Howard, Pat, man, you're in all of our stories. Uh, thank you for not giving us permission, but also not telling us that we can't. Um, <laughs> obviously, our loved ones. This ta- this is a time commitment for us. Um, yeah, it so, is. So you know, we we invest in in doing this show, and that affects other people too. So thank you for everyone who makes this possible throughout the year. And I might I might have gotten a dirty look or two over the years. Yeah, but it's I mean, you do anything for this amount of time, it's impossible not to grab a look or two. <laughs> and uh, I think that's going to do it I think that's it Swellness Awards 2018 in the books next time we talk to you it's next year it's 2019 and that means new games <laughs> so we'll start this whole thing over again oh yeah alright that's going to do it for us good night good night thanks for listening to the 2018 Swellness Awards good night <laughs>